Hello and welcome to the Z Hut. I'm Jay and today we're going to take a look at how to use an Arduino to turn almost any piece of metal into a capacitive touch sensor. Which means when you touch it, it will read the, the change in capacitance and you could use it say as a switch, which is how I have it hooked up here. So as you see when I touch it, the LED comes on. I touch it again and it turns off. Now this is just a little piece of aluminum and I folded it over a couple times to make it um, have a little stiffness to it. But uh, other things can be used as well and as you can see I touched the lead. It will do it as well and even though there's this little plastic coating over the alligator clip I'm still close enough to it where it's detecting the capacitance change and setting it off. Now in the software, and when we get to that, I'll show you, you could um, eliminate that if you only want it to turn on when it's touched, but I have the sensitivity um, not as sensitive, so I can show you, um, demonstrate this on a few different items. So you can see here I've got a larger sheet, and I just have to get close to it, and it's detecting the capacitance. I mean, this, this is really detecting. But, um, say you don't want something that big, there is a penny. And a penny works really good because you can solder to it. So you could use pennies and you could do a, a, an array and have multiple, you can use more one uh, than one capacitive touch sensor um, on the Arduino. And once again, when we get to the sketch, the programming, I'll show you how to add more. But for the demonstration, I only have one. One last little demonstration, and then we'll look at how it's put together. This is a rain sensor gauge, and it's just two grids. And when a raindrop gets on it, it will detect it. Now I have the alligator clip clipped to both. Once again, you could use something like that. So like I said, pretty much anything that's metal, you can use, um, you could hook this up to your car and in the program and set it um, <coughs> to detect if it's touched. You could connect this to a lamp. Whenever you touched the lamp anywhere that was metal, it would turn the lamp on and off. Lots of applications, but for today I just have it hooked up as a switch and uh, let's just get down how this is put together. As you can see, it is actually pretty simple. There's only really two components um, besides the piece of metal that you're going to need. Now, the LED is optional. I have it on um, Digital Pen 13, which also has, you can see on the Arduino board, also has an LED on there. But I just added an external one to make it easier to see for this demonstration. Otherwise, besides the Arduino board, um, you need a 10 mega ohm. Mega with an M. Um, that is optimal if you don't have a 10 meg. I've got some 5.5 megs. They worked as well. Um, you don't really want to get much lower than that. You're going to start having difficulty setting this up. If at all possible, use a 10 meg. It, this is actually designed uh, in the library in the sensing to work with a 10 mega ohm the best. But like I said, you can use slightly smaller and slightly bigger. And uh, that's just going between, that resistor is going between digital pin 4 and digital pin 6. And then also on digital pin 6, we have the alligator clip here, which connects to our metal device. That is how simple this is. It's all done in software except for that one little resistor right there. All right, let's go over the computer and take a look at the sketch for this. And I'll show you how you can uh, modify that to add more sensors and also how to set the level. Because like I said, when I had this connected, you didn't have to be very close to it to set it off. I will show you in the sketch how we can change the value, the sensing value, so that you would actually have to physically touch this before it would turn off and on. So I'll catch you at the computer in just a second. Okay, I've got the Arduino IDE opened up here. Now the first thing we're going to need to do is get our library. Um, I'm assuming you probably don't already have this library. So go under Sketch, Include Libraries, Manage Libraries. This will take a moment to come up.
There we go. Then in the search box here, you're going to put in capacitive sensor. I just copied the capacitive sensor off the library name right here. Put that in, and it should be the first one that comes up. It's this one here, the one by, by Paul Badger and Paul Struffigen. I'm not too sure if that's the correct way to pronounce it. But this is the library we want right here. So once you've installed that, now I already have it installed, so I'm just going to close out of here. So we're going to include that right here. Then next we need to give a name to that particular sensor. And as I said, you can't have more than one. And then we also need to define the pins it's on. I just called mine sensor. And uh, pin four, that's the transmit pin. That one you're, you'll use with the other ones as well. I guess I haven't tried different, trying to change it to a different pen. I suppose I should have, but um, I'll leave that up to you to experiment with. But, um, and then I've got uh, the second number here. This is the, the receive pen, basically the, the one that the, um, the alligator clip is on, uh, on mine, or it's where your piece of metal is connected, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, if you want to have more sensors, what you do is just simply copy that and then paste it in. And then, so the next one we want to have a different name, so I'll just call it sensor two. And then for this one, let's say use pen five. Now just remember to use the four the same. Now I've tried up to three, it works fine. I'm imagining you can use more. If after the three you're having problems, try using a different transmit pen for the other ones. But all right, let's get moving on here. Next we have um, a long, and we're calling it value, and that's what we're going to use to read the sensor. So again, if you're having more sensors, you'll want to have a, a, a val2 and a val3 and so on and so on. And we're using a long because the number can get very large depending on how big of a metal object you connect this to. It uh, does make a difference. Uh, then I have an integer here, and it's POS, um, just short for position. And that's just keeping track of if the LED was off and on down here in our if statements. So it knows when I touch it if it should turn that LED off and on. And then, of course, we're defining LED uh, on pin 13. In the void setup, we're doing our serial begin. Now, this is just for testing. Once you get everything set up, you can comment that out. Um, <laughs> then we have our pin mode for the LED, that's an output of course. Now in the void loops where we have the fun. So we're taking our val, our long here, val, and we're setting that uh, to do a read off of the capacitive sensor, and we're putting that reading into val. Then we're serial printing val. Now once again, this is for testing and setting it up. Once you're done, you'd want to comment this out. No sense running the serial monitor and printing if you're not, anything's connected to it. It's just a waste, waste um, it's drawing power on the, mic, on the Arduino microcontroller that you don't need to. And I just have it set up here, uh, an if statement and else if, and it's turning the uh, LED off and on. <clears throat> and we're just doing, um, I'm just checking if the value is greater than or equal to a thousand, and that's the reading we're getting from the sensor, <coughs> it turns it on. Or here, if it's on, it turns it off. And then the debounce that I got a, a delay of 500 in there. That's just so you have enough time to touch it and get your and take your finger off of it, so it doesn't turn off and on real quick, or on and off either way. And then I have a delay down here, and this is just to make things run smoothly of 10. But I'm going to change this real quick, and I'm going to change it um, so that we can see better here with the serial monitor because I'm going to demonstrate serial monitor now and how to change our value or set our value here depending on the size of the metal item that you have connected to it. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that. Should go pretty quick. All right, it's done uploading. Let's open up the serial monitor. Now, right now, I have the piece of tinfoil connected to it, and you can see that it jumps around a little bit, but we're, for the most part, um, I think the highest I've seen so far here is 133. 
So you could go ahead for this piece of tin foil. I'd probably recommend putting a value of around, oh, a thousand actually would work good because that way, let's see here. There's my hand about five, six inches away from it. You see how it goes up? So if you had it set at 400, you'd only have to get five inches within distance of this and it would turn on or turn off. Oh, my hand is drifting away. Now I'm getting to get even closer. And now I'm hovering within like an inch, no, half an inch. And you can see I'm just barely, maybe a quarter, not even a quarter, probably around, around an eighth to a quarter, and it's turning off and on. And there's me touching it. I'm holding my hand on it right now. So let me grab oh, that plate. And I'll connect it here. All right. Now you can see this plate, when I'm nowhere near it, it's close to the four, it's running around 400. And I don't got this sitting, I got it sitting on a piece of uh, carpet, so the static electricity is messing with it at us a little bit here. There's touching it, and there's not. As you can see, the value is higher for the most part than the aluminum foil, but once again, this bigger piece of metal, it's kind of giving me a hard time because we're on a piece of carpet. There's the penny connected to it. And there's my finger about half an inch or so away from it. There, I'm touching it. So I think you get the idea. Just plug, um, connect your piece of metal to your uh, pin, pin six or five or whatever one you're using for the sensor. Take a look at what it's reading when you're not touching it. Then take a look at when you're touching it. Come up with a number between there that works for you. Everybody's going to have their preferences. You might want it set, you know, so that you're within an inch of it. Now remember, if you have to have electrical conductivity to the connection to the metal object, but afterwards you could paint it, and that's another thing. Because you wouldn't be directly touching the metal, touching the paint, it's insulated, but it still detect the change in capacitance. So there's, again, where selecting the proper value is going to be left up to you. It just depends on the piece of metal that you're connecting to. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. So with that, uh, I hope you found this information useful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And with that, we'll just say um, I hope you have a great day. And remember, have fun building.